Hi there, and in this video I'll be talking about the funniest book I've read this year. Indeed, one of the funniest books I've ever read. Ryo Murakami's 1993 Roman Clay 69, which focuses on his tumultuous final year of senior high back in the year 1969. Now, before coming on to the story, I will, in time-honoured fashion, say a few words about the author himself. Now, I'll keep this brief with regards to Murakami's biography because he's extremely well known. Suffice to say, he's a Japanese writer, he's in his 70s now, and he's been extremely prolific, having produced over 30 novels, the best known of which is In the Miso Soup, which I plan to read next. 69 is, in fact, the first novel by him that I've read. If anyone watching wishes to point me in the direction of one of his other works, that you think I'll particularly enjoy, please do so in the comments below. But now let's talk about the story. As I said, 69 is an example of a Roman Eclay. This is a novel where actual events are fictionalised, frequently for the purposes of satire. And so the narrator of the story, Kembo, budding intellectual and wannabe artist, is essentially Murakami himself. And the action centres on his quest to lose his virginity, but also to ignite the spark of rebellion in his sleepy provincial Japanese high school and thus in some small way to replicate the unrest going on in far-off metropolises, the student riots and the anti-Vietnam war protest of the era. Kembo decides that the best way to attract the attentions of the opposite sex is through the performance of heroic deeds. The first of these is an act of radical political protest. He and his sidekicks go to the school the night before the biggest day in the academic calendar and barricade it and spray paint controversial slogans everywhere. The next day, of course, the entire school is scandalised and this succeeds in getting Kembo and his best friend expelled for a number of months. When they return, they turn their attentions to artistic activity. They produce an 8mm film and write a play and then put these on at a festival they stage, which provides the triumphant conclusion to the book. All of this is interspersed with the usual stuff of teenage movies, love triangles, run-ins with school gangs, and persecution at the hands of sadistic teachers. The outstanding feature of 69 is undoubtedly its humour. It really is one of the funniest books I've ever read. I was quite literally crying with laughter at various points in the story and in my analysis I'll touch upon two features of this book which in my view contribute greatly to making it quite so funny and they are its openness and its energy. There are two facets to this openness and they work in complementary fashion the first of which is Murakami's decision despite the fact that he was writing 69 while in his mid-30s to narrate the story as if the events are happening now and what that does is return the reader to the days of their youth which were marked in my case by a sense of infinite possibility and there is consequently a vast freedom present in the world of this novel which I found really invigorating. There is also of course the enemy, the brick wall of a stultifying system which seeks to integrate young people into itself with as little fuss as possible primarily by crushing their dreams. And it's the strategies of resistance adopted by Kembo and his friends to frustrate this process for as long as possible that produce so much of the humour in this book. The second facet of this openness is the voice of the narrator Kembo. And if there is any genius to be found in 69, I would suggest that here is where it lies in the mixture of frankness, naivety, bravado, scorn, lust, idealism and bathos one finds blended together in this voice and I'll just read you by way of example a passage from close to the beginning of the book. In 1969 we were 17 and we still had our cherries. To be a virgin at that age is nothing to be particularly proud of and nothing to be particularly ashamed of but it's something that weighs on your mind. The winter I turned 16 I'd run away from home my reason for doing so was that I perceived a fundamental contradiction in the entire examination system and wanted to get away from home and school and out on the streets in order to better think about this 
and to ponder the significance of the struggle that had developed that year between the student radicals and the aircraft carrier Enterprise. Sorry, that's not exactly true. The truth is that I didn't want to take part in a long distance race at school. Long distance running had always been a weak point with me. I'd hated it ever since junior high school. Now that I'm 32 and wiser, of course, I still hate it. Okay, so if a radical sense of freedom is one of the hallmarks of youth, the second issue I wish to touch upon is another, energy. As the title indicates, the book is set in the 1960s, but the anarchic energy on display is more redolent of the punk era than the hippie one. And that's one reason I enjoyed this book so much. It may be 2023, but I'm still very much a punk at heart. I listen to punk music every day, as do my neighbours. However, regardless of one's musical taste or the era one grew up in, it's probable that anyone whose teenagers were dominated by underground culture, by transgressive music, books and movies, will get a tremendous kick out of this book. It's liable to trigger oh so many memories. And I'll just cite one example here that reminds me of my youth, the conversational manoeuvres one engages in to avoid ever getting into the situation of speaking to someone who knows more about a topic than you do. It was around this time that I'd begun trying to perfect the art of fucking with people's minds. I'd figured out that when someone else was hogging the limelight, you could cut him down to size by bringing up a subject he didn't know anything about. If the other person knew a lot about literature, I'd talk about the Velvet Underground. If he knew a lot about rock, I'd talk about Messier. If he knew a lot about classical music, I'd talk about Roy Lichtenstein. If he knew a lot about pop art, I'd talk about Jean Genet, and so on. Do that in a small provincial city and you never lose an argument. Every time I read that passage, I feel my cheeks burning. I can't believe I used to engage in such shabby behaviour and I'd like to publicly apologise to everyone I spoke to about art between the ages of 18 and 25. Now, before I say my farewells, I just wish to mention two more pieces of popular culture, not books this time, but a movie and a TV series which share the same spirit as 69. For people of my generation, these will readily contextualise Murakami's novel. For younger viewers, you may just wish to check them out for yourself. Links in the description. Firstly, the American movie Animal House, and secondly, the British TV series The Young Ones, both very much in the same vein as 69. So there we have it. One of the funniest novels I've ever read, and if you haven't checked it out, I urge you to do so. It is free to read. Link also in the description. But there, I must stop and bid you farewell. So, until the next time, be safe, be strong. Nanu Nanu.